you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and you're watching my YouTube channel, so thanks a lot for that. So as you can see, it's getting kind of late, but I really wanted to come back to this pond. But this time of year, it's late November now. Okay, it's almost December. There's a different creature that rules these waters, and that is the water scorpion. What an alien of an insect. Looks rather ferocious, but it really isn't. Okay, looks can be deceiving. What I'm going to do is try to find one, and I'm going to bring it home and make the rest of this video at home because it's getting too dark now. But this is a creature that prefers still waters, hence this pond. So uh, let's go find one and uh, join me for the rest of the video, guys. There's one right there. Water scorpion. An amazing species. I say that all the time. But they're rather impressive, aren't they? Look at those forelegs. They look rather nasty. They can't pinch me with those or anything. They're made for invertebrates. Um, they're way too soft to, to harm a human. Okay, so there we have it. The impressive water scorpion. Also known as the water stick or Renatra. I put it in this white container so that you can actually see it easier. Otherwise, it can be pretty difficult to see if it's in a jar or its natural environment because it blends in so well with the background and the sediment and whatnot. As you can see, it's dark brown, which matches everything. There are a bunch of species. I think there are around 18 species. Uh, these are bugs. They're in the Henoptera family, so it is truly a bug. So it has those large eyes for detecting prey, but it's also got that piercing beak, which is characteristic of all true bugs. It basically pierces its prey, injects a paralyzing venom, which also begins the digestion process. Then it just sucks the insides out like a protein shake. Pretty nasty way to go. Now it hunts things like small fish and small invertebrates like the damselfly larva and various other creatures. And there are its claws, nice and sharp. They work like a jackknife. When closed, they actually fit into a special groove. Now it uses them to grab and subdue its prey. Then it just brings it up to its mouth and delivers the fatal blow. Its face actually reminds me of something created by Jim Henson. And if you look ever so carefully, you see that along those legs are hairs. We've got all sorts of microinvertebrates in here. But if there's hairs along those legs they use to propel themselves through the water. See that? So they, pro they propel themselves through the water by stroking their legs like paddles. Really neat stuff. Now you see that tube on its back end right there? That tube is actually a snorkel. It uses it for breathing. It just sticks it above the surface of the water and uses it as a breathing apparatus. However, that is not the only way it obtains oxygen. On the underside of the abdomen of the insect are these tiny plates. These plates have even smaller hairs that are designed to trap air bubbles. Now among other things, those bubbles actually allow the insect to exchange oxygen while it's below the surface of the water. In fact, even under the ice. Now water scorpions are ambush predators. They'll patiently wait attached to some plants or the bottom of the pond for an unfortunate insect to come along. When the water scorpion's on the hunt, it's a sight to behold. It uses those long legs to stealthily crawl and inch itself along on the bottom of the pond or amongst the plant matter growing in the pond. And then when the unfortunate invertebrate happens along, the water scorpion will quickly snatch it with those jackknife-like forelegs and then pierce it with that sucking mouth. Okay guys, that's something else, isn't it? What an amazing creature. So, thanks for watching my video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned a thing or two. And maybe if you guys find yourselves at a pond in the fall, peer a little closer, maybe you will find a water scorpion. I'm Chris Ignano. Signing out.